neighbor would say, I, I didn't look like I would be the one. You talk to the Apostle Paul when he was persecuting Christians and arresting them, and he would tell you that I didn't look like. You talk to Peter when they asked Peter and said, Peter, are you one of his? And Peter denied him and even cursed. Peter would say, if you caught me then, I didn't look like. Talk to Zacchaeus when he was in the sycamore tree and he was looking for Jesus and he was short of stature a crook. Zacchaeus would say, if you had found me then, I didn't look like I was the one. Today we're going to look at a family, two parents, one mother that was barren, unable to produce father who was old and they both were and God in a miraculous way brought forth a child and if you were to ask this boy uh, how did you become who you became he would say if you had looked at me I didn't look like I would be the one he hung out in the woods eating locusts and wild honey. He didn't go to the schools like the other kids. He was odd, strange, peculiar. But isn't it amazing how God will choose folk that we think ought not to be in order to make them what he wants them to be? such as our text here today. And I want to prepare to read this. I'm going to read from the New International Version, chapter 1, verses 5 to verse 17. I need to also, as we stand, thank the Deacon Crane for that prayer, brother. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. His initials are JC, and you know I mess with him because his initials are JC. He doesn't look like the one. <laughs> but he's our friend. Stand up, please, for the word. We'll spend a little time in reading these verses and a uh, little time talking about them, and then uh, we'll go right into communion. You all look good this morning. But look, y'all want to come out on the first Sunday in December, but y'all. Y'all came out. Is there anybody else left in St. Louis? Y'all give yourselves a hand. Yeah. Bless you. We had a good uh, uh, 8.30 service at North and uh, going back there at 11.30 in this service. It's just God doing something that is truly amazing. Verse 5, in the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah, who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife, Elizabeth, was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's uh, commands and decrees, blameless. But they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive. And they were both very old. Once when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as a priest before God, he was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time of the burning incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. 
When Zachariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel of the Lord said to him, Do not be afraid, Zachariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. Listen to these final verses. He will be a joy and delight to you. And many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to be, never to take wine or fermented drink. And he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many to the people of Israel, to the Lord their God, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. This is the word of God. We believe it. <laughs> we will obey it. Father, we thank you for this, your word. Thank you for your word, God. Your word keeps us. Your word directs and covers us, God. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. But your word is that which we covered. You said to do it to see it and to read it, to study it both day and night. And so God, we thank you for this, your word. Bless your people. Bless this preacher. May your word go forth that we will give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. but I've been blessed to witness people who have been forerunners, people who will go before, go ahead, people who will precede others before they arrive, precede them in their coming, or even those who would assist with the development of someone else. I have been blessed with wonderful forebears. When I look back over my life, I, I clearly see how God providentially positioned me with certain people so that they could bless my life and position me for the purpose in which God has called me. I hope you don't miss how God has aligned your life with certain people that if they have not entered into your life, there is no way you can be who you are. As a matter of fact, I'll take it further. There is no way you could have achieved what you have achieved. It, it, is, it is because certain people have entered into your life, maybe for a short season, but they serve a valuable purpose in forming and shaping you to be who you are. You and I owe it to those matriarchs and those patriarchs, those individuals who entered into our lives to make a difference into our lives. Amen. I began pondering and thinking about significant people and I have a long list that I cannot name them all, but they have just meant so much to me. I want to name just a couple. I had a lady named Miss Martha. She meant so much to me. A gentleman named Mr. Lucius 
meant so much to me. A lady named Carrie Myers meant so much to me. A brother named Jerry Simpson meant so much to me. A sister named Lady Ida meant so much and mean so much to me. Now, you probably don't know who they are. They are, for me, powerfully impacting people who have influenced my life. And the way I keep them alive is I talk about it. Yeah, yeah. The way I keep them living <laughs> is I tell others that if, if God had not placed people in my life, I wouldn't be where I am. Some of y'all, some of you all, rather, are too stingy with your thinking <laughs> to involve even the fact that somebody helped you on your way. Some of you just want us to think that you did it by yourself. We need to let you know you ain't fooling us because you, you're really not that smart. You're not fool enough. You're not that gifted. As a matter of fact, there were people more smarter than you that could have qualified to do what you do. But somebody urged you on your way. Somebody wiped tears from your weeping eyes. Somebody encouraged you when you were ready to quit. Don't you forget the people who have come your way. Miss Martha was one of those people who blessed me beyond imagination. I mean, she was a sister of sisters. Matter of fact, I could talk to her the, about her the whole sermon, but I dare not do it. But I want to give you just a glimpse of the lady she was. She was my babysitter. When my mama had to go to work and couldn't take care of seven kids, Miss Martha was there. I don't really know Miss Martha's training. I don't know what school she went to. I don't know what degree she has achieved. But I know she specialized in using a switch. <laughs> there was no question she mastered it. Yes, she did. And not only did she have a switch, y'all, but she uh, dipped snuff. <laughs> now, for the young people who don't know what snuff is, snuff is something akin to tobacco. They would put it in their lip, and their lip would be pregnant, and there would be a can across the heel, and they had the precision. Miss <laughs> uh, Martha was that kind of lady. She babysitted, kept us, and made sure we, was, we were fine if I was late from getting home from school. Miss Martha would dress in the worst of garments <laughs> and telling everybody she's looking for me. <laughs> and when I would see her, she would have in her right hand not a Bible, but a switch. <laughs> and the rest is history. I am better because of people like Miss Martha. I would. I would sit on my front porch on Grand Boulevard across the street from Tomboy, down the street from 905 and the, and the, and the donut shop that y'all are so familiar with. I, 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 would, I would sit out there and listen to Mr. Lucius talk to me. That's how I became old while I was young. <laughs> I hung around folk who could tell me something. I was a little boy sitting on the porch and that was the day, uh, JC, when we would sit late at night and I could sleep on the porch. As a matter of fact, I didn't have to lock my door. We would go in and I would just hold our way. And Mr. Lucius would bless me with wisdom. Mr. Lucius would pour into me. He would pour wisdom into me and I am better because of Mr. Lucius. Jerry Simpson was the first uh, chief deacon of this church, ran with my grandfather. They were two guys that if you saw them, they were two peas in a pod. And they, they, Jerry Simpson had this powerful folk voice. He would stand up and really couldn't sing a whole lot or very well, but he had this 
voice and he represented this man of strength and this man of character. He would toss me as a kid from one arm of a deacon to another and I remember the love and the respect at Jerry Simpson and you don't even know who he is but guess what I'm keeping him alive by telling you who he is Karen Myers was this lady who, who controlled and managed the RF Specials Choir she, she was that one that took care of the young people. As a matter of fact, she had the key to the church. Before anybody got to the church, she opened the door and warmed up the furnace. She did all of that kind of stuff. I stayed overnight at her house. She cooked for me. She blessed me. She kept me rooted and grounded. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so grateful and thankful for people who have come before me in my life to help develop me into who God wanted me to be. I wish I had time to ask you who has blessed you. I wish I had time to ask you who has come before you. And if you can't name somebody, shame on you. If the only name you can give is your first and last name, shame on you. Can I go back to whence I started? You didn't get here by yourself. Somebody paid your way. Somebody clothed you. Somebody took care of you. As a matter of fact, let me take a commercial for a minute. And those of you online, help me here. I want you to at least call out somebody's name that you know blessed you. I want you to call out. It could be mama. It could be daddy. It could be big mama. It could be granddaddy. Somebody you grateful for. Somebody you know that took care of you. Loved you when you weren't fit to be loved. Loved you in spite of yourself. I want you to recognize somebody that blessed you. You and nobody else know their name, maybe but you. But I dare you to call out their name. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, as we as we think about these unnamed witnesses and warriors and people who have been good to us, the Bible is surrounded by these quiet, silent witnesses who meant so much to the gospel. Ladies and gentlemen, as we will engage in the next couple of weeks into the life and the times of the birth of Jesus, I want to, I want to submit to you that uh, most people surrounding his birth are people who you wouldn't even expect to be there. Most people surrounding his birth are people you would have never chosen to be where they are. Many people who are engaged in his arrival would have never been chosen by popular community. They would have been left out. They would have been pushed aside. But God has a way of including the broken, the wounded, the weary, and those who were supposed to be last, he makes them, y'all talk to me first. If you would, if you would, let me get to this and then I'll be done. I think, I, I think, I think I've done enough work in setting it up. I think I've done enough work in putting the plate out there and putting some vegetables on the plate. I got the knife and the fork and the spoon. Got you a cup there that we're going to drink some red Kool-Aid in a minute. But since we've set this up, I think, I think I want to invite you to looking at the environment or the context or the situation that surrounded the birth of this Jesus. By the way, a king is coming. And normally when a king is coming, there is honor everywhere. You want dignitaries on the front row. Yes, yeah. you call everybody that's somebody to be in the crowd. Why? Because the king is coming. You send out invitations, you make preparations, you make announcements because the king is coming. Listen, if somebody famous is coming to St. Louis, they will stop traffic on the highway while you late for work. <laughs> And make sure that whoever is important 
can have the right of way to get to wherever they're going. And it is interesting to me, ladies and gentlemen, that God does not do that. By the way, if if y'all 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 blessed that I'm not God, because if I were God and my son that's coming to shed his blood to redeem humanity, everybody would know that he's coming. As a matter of fact, I would have got first century CNN on the true and I would have got everybody else there and I would have made a public announcement that he is coming, but God remains almost silent. He remains almost silent. Silent to a degree, ladies and gentlemen, that the announcement is only to a couple fold. I know there's some shepherds on the hill watching their sheep by night. And you know, he said, go, he's here. Unto us is born a savior. Go see him. I know, I know that there are a few people coming from the east, or from the west and traveling to the east rather. And they're on their way and all they have is a star. And they're following a star from the east and they're watching. But they're just a few of those fellas coming. Even when the sun came, that was, the end was full. Ain't no way. If I created all of this. That my boy is going to get to the end and you're going to tell him no room. No way. He, there's nowhere to lay his head. He uses an ox manger to lay his head. And then when he gets ready to introduce his son, he calls on a couple elderly in age to produce a child. Y'all got to get it. He's a priest. She is old. Her name is Elizabeth. She is old and cannot produce. Uh, uh, Zachariah is his name. He goes into the temple and he's there doing his duty. And suddenly there's an announcement that you're going to have a son. You listen to the dialogue. If you listen to the dialogue, uh, Zachariah said, how can I have a son? I mean, Lord, you know, I'm, I'm past my childbearing or child producing age and as a matter of fact my 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 lady that I've been with for a long time she's barren she can't have children and you need to tell me you're going to do something through us God says to him listen man and I'm paraphrasing the angel as he was talking to him his name was Gabriel since you won't believe you will be stricken dumb you won't be able to talk until this baby is born. <sighs> so I want to get to the birth and then we'll get out of here. Um, 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 um. Zachariah goes home and this is my sanctified imagination. <laughs> he can't talk and she says, what's wrong? I need my sign crew. I was at <laughs> So he probably wrote down because if you read the delivery day uh, later, you'll find that they had a tablet or a piece of manner of writing utensils that he could write on. And, and normally, ladies and gentlemen, they would name the baby after somebody that is close by in the family. Um, and typically after the father or somebody that is related. And so the family didn't have a job there. But God says his name shall be John. Now, I got three points of the poem and then I'm going to get out of here. Then I can tell where we are. So let me, let me, let me do this. First thing I want you to see is that the birth was a miracle. The second thing I want you to see is that the birth came from a barren place. The third thing I want you to see is that because of the birth, it was really produced because of this boy's upbringing. Yeah, that makes some sense. 
And then the last thing I want you to see is the birth was blessed by the Holy Spirit. So since this is a, a good teaching Sunday for me, I get to teach it. Listen, listen, listen. God wanted everybody to know that this boy was not produced by normal means. That this boy is produced by a godly means. That the birth that came is produced because God orchestrated it. Uh, God uh, provided it. God uh, uh, made it possible so that nobody, not even Elizabeth or Zachariah, could claim that they did it by themselves. They had to give God credit because can't nobody do this kind of stuff but God. Since, um, since, uh, since I got a waiting audience and you all are listening to me, I got news for you. When God got ready to produce you, when God got ready to bring you into existence, Please know, ladies and gentlemen, it was God who used somebody, mama, dad, to bring you here. Don't, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. If it were not for the Lord, the Bible says he called us before the foundations of the world. We were already determined to come predetermined to be here. God brought mom and daddy to produce it, but you are birthed through the channels of a divine God who decided to position you on earth so when you look back and wonder how you got here, you got to thank God for the privilege of producing you here today. Uh, Secondly, if you like me, you came from a barren place. Um, what you see now, ladies and gentlemen, was not supposed to be in the natural sense. Because I was born from a barren place. And the truth is, you too. Okay, 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 okay. Let me tell you a secret. When I preach these kind of sermons and make these kind of poems, what is amazing to me is I feel the tension in the room when I make certain statements because culture tells you your training and your teaching tells you the, the, the information on, on TV and radio and networks and social platforms tell you you all good by yourself. They tell you that if you just think it, you can be it. They tell you that the power source relies and reigns in you. And all you got to do is be great in who you are and you can make it and be whoever you want to be. That's the biggest lie that you've ever heard. If it had not been. I wish I had somebody. I need about two of you who know that you had sense, but God had to direct you with your sense. I need somebody to know that if God had picked you up, turn you around. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me see. Yeah. How shall I say this? I mean, look. Yeah. I'm not ashamed to say I, I'm a miracle. All right, I, I can feel the tension again. They told you you were blessed from birth. No, no, they told you that you the prettiest baby. You wasn't pretty. That's just mom and dad. They all look at They know, no, no, that baby, you form, you shape, you matured, you had to go through a process. You weren't born pretty. You were born in sin, shaping, in iniquity. But God! 
I wish I had somebody that's willing to tell your neighbor it was nobody but God who turned my life around. God who made things possible. God. <laughs> Still feeling attention here. Some of you sitting in your seat talking about not me. I was born privileged. You were born with spit in your mouth. You couldn't even crawl, you couldn't even feed yourself if it had not been for a loving parent and a loving God that trained and equipped you. You would be. I said spit because there are some people who think they were born with a silver spoon. And it was, it was an impossible happening, but God made it happen. And here's what I love about God. God took a boy, he was born, and I, I, I he took a boy that, uh, as he grew up, he grew up looking crazy. <laughs> Grew up looking crazy. He didn't hang around in the neighborhood. He went into the woods, in the forest, and ate locusts and honey and wild honey. The thing that I love about God is that sometimes God will use your upbringing to bless you. How much time do you have? This boy was looking crazy and country. <laughs> and nobody would have thought that he would be a forerunner for Jesus. Crazy and country. Help me with my next point. Look at your neighbors and neighbor. You looking at somebody who had one day in my life, one time in my life, they called me crazy. And I've been country. But I tell your neighbor, but look at what God can do. Tell him he's taking my country ways and my crazy ways and he's used them to be says that he shall he shall go before he shall lead he shall go before Christ he will make the crooked places straight and the rough places plain he's a forerunner amen and anybody could be anybody could look like that but that was a distinctive in the text and I find this the Bible says he will be led and feel with the Holy Spirit. I just realized why some of y'all don't move one time. I ain't mad at you. You can't help it. Because if you don't know the third middle of the Trinity, you don't know when to move. You need somebody to sing the truth to make you feel good. But when you hear the right record from the Holy Ghost and you hear the report from heaven, if you got the Holy Ghost in you, you can't help. I wish I had about 10 of y'all with the Holy Ghost on, board. on this side. I'm telling y'all with the Holy Ghost on this side. Matter of fact, he'll make you move. He'll make you run. He'll make you shout. He'll make you... Just got it. 
interesting part to this uh, little nugget that I should have pointed the place to the text. The interesting part to this text and to this placement is that the Bible says that he would have the Holy Ghost before he's born. This was because I had to, I had to I had to get the Holy Ghost. You got two seconds. The Holy Ghost had to get me. The Holy Ghost had to grab the church on the day of Pentecost. But the Bible says that this boy would have the Holy Spirit before he fell. Come here, y'all. Y'all y'all messing with me. Come here. It's, it's Mary and Elizabeth and Father splits heaven open in two and speaks and says, This is my beloved son, in whom I will be. You gotta get the trinity. The son is in his hand and the father is speaking. And their descendant in the shape of the dove, the Holy Ghost, who landed on him. Let me give you this, ladies. Let me give you this. You cannot make it without the Spirit of God. That's, that's, that's. Amen. You can be talented, you can be gifted, you can be all that. But it's not by might, nor by power, but it's by the Spirit, said the Lord. That's why I spoke who have less education than you.